So in this video, we're going to explore the reasons behind a you know, kind of common public health notice. If you happen to go up into the mountains here in Washington, if you're cross-country skiing or hiking or things like that, you're warned, don't eat the snow. And it's not just because it might be yellow or it might be dirty. Like, Additionally, it's dangerous for your health. If you get lost up in the mountains and you are dehydrated, a lot of times folks tend to have the idea that, well, snow is water. I'll just eat the snow. This is far worse for you than the dehydration. Let's explore why about it. Let's say it's outside and it's minus 20 degrees Celsius outside. That snow has been up in the mountains. It is definitely that cold. So your ice is minus 20 degrees. If you were to eat it, it would start to warm up until it hits zero degrees. But at that point, it will have melted. Well, it'll start to melt. And then eventually, it'll warm up until it hits your body temp, 37 degrees Celsius. And it will balance out there. Any ice that you would ingest has to get warmed up to your body temp. Well, if you're up in the mountains and you're severely dehydrated, perhaps you'd eat about a liter of snow, so about a thousand grams of ice. Let's do the calculation on just how much energy that's going to take. To do it, though, I've got to think about the regions. I've got one where I'm ice warming, one where I'm melting, and one where I'm liquid warming. So I've really got three parts. I have the Q of ice ice warming, I have a Q of ice melting, and I have a Q of liquid H2O warming. There's really going to be three separate calculations, and this is important. You cannot go from minus 20 ice straight to 37 liquid. Because of this interrupt where we go through a phase change, we have to calculate these stepwise. This has to be broken into three separate calculations. So what are we going to use? Well, ice warming, that's going to be a Q equals MS delta T. I am ice at the start, and I end ice. What are my changes, though? Well, I'm minus 20 degrees Celsius ice, and I go up to 0 degrees Celsius ice. So I'm still the fa same phase at this point. My mass, 1,000 grams. S value for solid ice, 0 0.486 calorie per gram degree Celsius. And my delta T, well, 0 minus negative 20 is a positive 20 change. And so I'm going to go up 1,000 times 20 times 0.486. And what we see is that it is 9,720 calories. Just heating that ice to zero degrees required just shy of 10,000 calories. Now we need to melt that ice. Well, I was zero degrees Celsius ice. I'm going to become zero degrees Celsius liquid. And so my second step is going to be a Q equals M delta H. I don't have a temperature change, I have a phase change. My mass is still a thousand grams. Delta H for melting for water was 79.7 .7 calories per gram. So 79,700 calories, about eight times more than heating that ice up 20 degrees. And our last step for liquid water, well, I've achieved liquid water at zero degrees. So we have zero degree Celsius liquid, and we're taking it up to body temp, 37 degrees Celsius liquid. In this case, I have a temperature change. I start liquid, I end liquid. I am in a phase, so I can use Q equals MS delta T. 
My mass is still 1,000 grams. My S value for liquid water is 1 calorie per gram degree Celsius. That's the de definition for the calorie. And then my delta T. Well, my final temp is 37. My starting temp is 0. So 37 minus 0 is 37 degrees Celsius. To heat up that liquid water is going to require 37,000 calories. This results in a total energy requirement of 126,420 calories. 126,000 calories or 126 kilocalories to heat up that one liter of ice to body temperature. Well, 126 kilocalories is 126 big C calories. And generally in a day, the average dietary label is for 2,000 big C calories. So you're already using about, what, 6% of your daily intake just to get that ice melted and up to body temp? That is a lot of your energy. Additionally, where does it come from? You don't burn that much food right away to make energy. Like You heat up slowly over time. That energy to melt the ice comes from sapping the temperature of your body. Which leads us to our second bit. The Q for the ice, what it gained, must equal what you lost. So the body had to lose that much energy. So we could say that minus 126,420 calories must equal the mass of your body the S value, and the delta T. Now, the body isn't completely water. There's plenty of other things, but a fair part of us is water. That's where most of our heat reserve actually comes from. So let's make a small approximation. Let's just assume that I am 90 kilograms of water, basically a big water balloon weighing a little more than it ought to. So if I assume that is a good approximation of me, then I can plug those in. 90 kilograms is 90,000 grams. I'm mostly liquid, so one calorie per gram degree Celsius. Delta T. What we can actually do here, by knowing the energy the body must have lost, we can rearrange this to solve the temperature my body must go down. What temperature did I lose to heat up that ice? So 126,420 divided by 90,000 divided by 1. My delta T is going to be negative 1.40 degrees Celsius. And realistically, we're not watching sig figs too closely here, but about 1.5 degrees Celsius, that liter of water that came from ice, that kilogram of water that we ingested lowered the body temperature by 1.4 degrees Celsius. That is a medically worrying lowering of temperature. That is beginning hypothermia. Once you're that cold, your body can't respond as effectively, which means generating the heat to make it up becomes harder, and you're already losing a great amount for being out in the mountains. This is why you're not supposed to eat snow if you are trapped up in the mountains. The body temp loss caused by it is so significant that it can hinder your body's ability to continue to survive. And so by using these energy calculations, we can actually explore what's going on and just how bad is it for your body. It's one thing to eat a little bit of snow when you're young and then go back inside where you're kept warm. But if you are alone in the mountains in a hazardous situation, this is why you're here repeatedly, do not eat snow. It will be detrimental to your health. What we really saw from this one was applying our equations in series. So I had three separate equations to deal with the three separate regions that we went through. One was an in-phase temp change of the solid. One was a phase change from solid to liquid. And the third was an in-phase change of temp while being liquid. We must use each of these regions separately 
There is no ability to go straight from minus 20 Celsius ice to 37 liquid. We have to go through the different steps of the phase changes. So here's an example with some relevant health info.